Well, welcome to our 2022 Christmas home tour. It's just starting to get dark. And we've got our lights on. If you wanted to go in the gate, there is some greenery down here on the gate. The lights are so bright, I don't know that it'll show. But swag there. Bows on the window boxes. Lights in the window. Let's go back and come in this way. my old pot that had petunias in it or something I guess and I put some greeneries in it with an obelisk we have the lights along the pathway here and our pencil holly that we've put some fresh cut greens Some berries. And now to the front door. And again, I've used fresh cut greens around my urns at the front door. Here's our door wreath. If you listen carefully, you can hear the bells ring when the door shuts. And welcome inside. I have found that the only way I can decorate is whole hog. Some people do just a little bit of decorating and show you that one little thing they've decorated. I am so used to decorating for the party, the family gathering, the birthday party, the Christmas parties, that I can't slow myself down. I can't stop long enough to do individual videos. I just want to do them all. Do all my decorating at once. A big box of pine cones that hides the electrical cords. I like to use a ribbon with some fresh cut greenery to just add a little touch of Christmas in different places. And over here, here is my corner hutch. bottom shelf with the tree and Santa's bag and some presents. In the middle shelf, Santa with a kitty and a puppy. That's a, a vintage Santa that uh, I think my grandmother bought in the 1960s, so I grew up with that in the early 60s. And then there's the candy carriage from Christmas over a hundred years ago. It's a pretty vignette, and there's our garland on the window, and some window, some candles in the window, and that Santa is holding lights that don't work, so it's a true confession. Only half that strand of lights works, I put the rest of them in that little Santa container. the cat who came for Christmas. Again, some greenery and a ribbon on a candle. Here is the 
China hatch. On top is a garland with some ribbons. And in the cabinet, I purchased at the thrift store um, some faux boxwood. And I cut that up and put that in the individual shells. They're having a Christmas party here and dancing at the Christmas party. Some berries with that boxwood and some other faux greenery and a pine cone. And here are some old ornaments, a little silver train and a little silver rocking horse. trip across country. And here's a sweet little nativity. And down at the bottom, the Tim Floyd bell plate. And a spode Christmas tree platter. It's got a crystal ball on top so you can't really see it. And a little more green. Here on the piano, I hadn't planned on buying a topiary, but I so infrequently find them at a good price that when I saw this one at Trader Joe's, I had to snag it. And there are some angels. items to make it look warm and cozy. And here's our Christmas tree. And again, I wanted him to make, make him look like he came from the woodlands. And it's kind of fun here. A fun bird. I guess that's our partridge in a pear tree. He's probably not a partridge, and this is definitely not a pear tree. But there's our bird. And this has got nativities and bird, uh, bird related and wild related, wild animal related things. And very natural kind of look. Do you have a little Santa Claus back there selling carrots? A little bird on a swing here. actually a natural foraged arrangement with cypress and cedars and hollies and baby's breath and a pine cone all in some water absorbent foam so that will stay fresh for the next two and a half three weeks with a couple of birds there some needlepoint Christmas trees, and over here, a little cross-stitch Christmas tree. Maybe someday I'll make him into a bigger pillow so he's a little more important. And looking through into our library, there are some amaryllis and the stained glass Christmas trees that my father made many years ago, and a cookie plate for Santa. stick with a ribbon and some greenery on it. And in the bathroom, just have a little photo in there. 
Maybe I'll do some more decorating in there, but not much for now. And over here in the window, since these are all on the same the front, you know, the mirror image of the garland in the window. Those are doubled garlands, just inexpensive garlands that have been doubled, doubled and some beading and some candles in the window. Here are our little stained glass Christmas trees. And there's our empty biscuit jar. We'll have to do some baking and fill that up. And I am a huge fan of faux amaryllis because they look so real. Years ago, my sister-in-law had some amaryllis on her mantle for the Christmas season, and I had to drive past her house every day to go home, and her amaryllis lasted and lasted, and I'd never had amaryllis that lasted that well. And I said, what are you doing to keep them blooming for so long? And she said, they're faux amaryllis. And I had to go over and actually touch them to tell. And so I promptly went out and bought myself some amaryllis after Christmas when they were on markdown. And I had those amaryllis for years and I think those have ended up with one of my daughters. But these I found at a thrift store this summer and I didn't even hesitate to immediately snag those. So I wanted some amaryllis. I put them at different heights so they're a little visually interesting. Now going back into the back of our house, I have a little wreath on a mirror and all of our candles lit there's our little table I love this sweet little nativity made by someone that went to church with my parents and just a little faux greenery there and Everybody gets just a little touch of greenery. There's our little boy with his greenery. And on the top, the holly pitcher and some greenery. And I've put one of my Christmas placemats that my grandmother made on my tray. Then looking down here. Oh, I meant to put some greenery on here. I forgot that. This is one of my favorite things that makes me so, just laugh so hard. This is Santa Claus. And over here, we have Mrs. Claus. If you look at them very carefully, they are made out of soda pop cans. Now they've changed the mouths in the cans now, but I think you can still do that. But they crush the can and decorate it. And this was made by the mother of one of my students. And it's one of my favorite decorations. It's so funny. Now, down here, change out, put in some green candles. And we have the three wise men that kind of look like little Santa Clauses bringing gifts. And here, I've just put a little bit of faux pine, faux berry, and a little faux holly with my woven balls to get that a little Christmas look. And a few acorns left over. A little faux greenery just to buck that up a little bit. And in the kitchen, now, I've just been to the store, so you can't tell, but I have, these are the Spode Christmas plates that I switched out in my tiered um, plate holder. But those are Christmassy. When so the produce gets low, you can see the Christmas trees. Just little touches of Christmas. The Christmas tree there. And this is a garland that's again been doubled and I've hung little cookie cutters on the garland. Oh, I, didn't, I forgot to light my little berry candle. It's a little candle with berries. 
And again, my cookie jars are empty. It's time to start cooking. And on the stove, we have our tea kettle. Found that at a thrift store for 75% off. I think I paid like $5 for it. There's dinner. Let's say I'm not cooking tonight. And another thrift store find. A spode serving plate. And here on the table, another natural centerpiece made out of Cypress and cedar, baby's breath, holly, some plant that I have no idea what it is, but I love the seeds. And the cypress had little cones on it, and then some other pine cones with a candle in the center. And I'd be more than happy to share how I made that. Very simple, fun thing to do. And I oh, forgot to turn the lights on on the wreath, but this is the um, garland that I made in my last video, my last Christmas video. And there is the wreath that has lights in it. They're just not turned on at the moment. And here's another garland. I only do one tree in my house. Trees are so much trouble. And garlands are super easy to decorate. So, there's the garland. It's again, the magnolia leaves and pine cones. And on this one, his theme is snowmen. So, some of these snowmen are really quite old. This one, probably from the early 60s, kind of inspired by Frosty the Snowman. And then the other one that's probably even older is this one right here, that little snowman. Then we have another little snowman here. You can tell he's a snowman because he has a carrot nose. And another little cute one hanging here. And another one. He doesn't look very snowman-y, but he's supposed to be a snowman, I guess. And he's carrying a bird. Now, around them, I have used white status. I went to Trader Joe's, and I think it was $3.99 for a bunch of status and $3.99 for a bunch of baby's breath. And these will dry naturally. And you can see here, they're faux ivy. My magnolia leaves that I preserved and some faux berries. And I will use this for multiple years until it, the lights quit working. These are old fashioned big lights. But you can see how fun those big colorful lights are and how much they add to the decoration here. And over here, another little arrangement. And you can see this one has some acorns, some big acorns in it, but it's the very same combination of cypress, cedar, hollies, baby's breath, a little moss down there at the bottom, and a little snowman. And oh, back behind it, switched out one of my pictures. There's a little picture of some snowmen. And over here, another little snowman. And here is a pine cone tree. Now there's just a little basket that uh, I tend to sit and work here. And so my phone is there and a little basket with some trees. It fits perfectly in there. And we put some magnolias and some fresh holly. That's going to dry out. I know that, but at least I'm aware of where it's going to dry out. And some 
ribbons. Oh, his light didn't get turned on either. But you know, there, I can reach that light. So his light's turned on. Some ribbons, some tiny little berries, some little baby's breath. Owl candles holders from Mackenzie Child, all on a Scandinavian runner. It's there on my coffee table. That makes something fun to look at in here. Now, on this little table over here, this is what's normally here, but I just added a little touch of faux greenery and a pine cone. That was a, a stem that I cut up and it made me five nice pieces that I've used all around the house. Now one of the things I love to do if I have a little spot that I'm not really going to change up like this little candle stand. I changed the candle to put in a green candle and added a ribbon and some greenery. This is real greenery so it's going to dry out. I need to make sure I don't catch it on fire. But that's just some holly and some baby's breath. Couldn't be easier or less expensive to do. And it just makes a pretty little pop of color in that corner. Now here is another natural arrangement with water in it so it will stay green longer in the bedroom. And in the bathroom, another one of the little copper mules with another collection of fresh greenery. Now, this is the arrangement that stays in my bedroom all the time. In the fall, I use um, just the dried oak leaf hydrangeas. I added some red berries to it for Christmas. Um, I'll remove the berries for winter, and then I'll take those out and use some um, hydrangeas for the spring and summer. So I can use the very same arrangement and just switch things out. And this door shows from the front of the house, so I always put a nice big wreath on it. This is an inexpensive faux wreath, and I have added fairy lights and some ivy leaves and some red berries and pine cones and some little white seeds of some flavor, and the magnolia leaves that I preserved with glycerin. And the morning sun comes through here, and it's really nice because the leaves kind of glow golden, and that's really pretty. Now, the thing about my house is you can see straight through my house. I'm just inside the front door. You can see back into the dining room, the family room, and the French door in the bedroom. Fortunately, you don't see the kitchen, but you very much see the whole house from the front, including just a step away, you can see into the library. I hope you've enjoyed our Christmas tour. And there's Kitty Kirby in his favorite spot. So Kitty Kirby, tell everybody, Merry Christmas. Okay, Kirby, you ready? Meow. <laughs> He's not much of a talker. Anyway, see you next time. <laughs>